Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We are teaching on the uh, life teachings of Paul. We're in the book of Ephesians. And so we want to um, want to pick up and hear within the book of Ephesians and um, go over where we are from there. We are in Ephesians chapter 1. We got last week down to about verse 14, then that's what we quit because we didn't want to try to um, go too far in, in doing that because I didn't want to overrun that. So I um, felt like we would, we would overrun some stuff and we didn't want to do that. So Ephesians chapter 1, now we know that Paul uh, is in Caesarea in prison and is what was referred to as the first imprisonment. And so... Um, that, that's where he is. We, we, um, we kind of ran past that a couple weeks ago. We just went, went and read too far left. Let, went right past Paul being in prison. We're supposed to stop and read what letters he wrote. Well, he wrote, um, he wrote Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians in his first imprisonment before he went to Rome. And so uh, around 62 AD. Uh, and, and then Philemon was written uh, in um, uh, about 63. And then his second imprisonment comes Titus, 1st and 2nd Timothy. Um, and let's get into Ephesians. We are picking up here, Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, we stopped last week. I like, like I said, around 13, 14 and 15. So we'll just pick up and um, we'll just go ahead and read the prayer. How about that? We won't recover it, but we'll just go ahead. Um, that's what we get ready to cover. Uh, verse 14, which is verse 13. And whom you also trusted. Let's go back to verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now, the purchased possession is your body. So when you got born again, your spirit got born again, our mind gets renewed, and then we have a promise of a future glorification and resurrection of the physical, mortal, death-doomed, corruptible body with an incorruptible, immortal body. And we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit with the promise that we're going to get that body. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we're going to get it, and we're going to get it when Jesus comes back. Yeah. Hallelujah. All righty. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love for unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, here's Paul's prayer. He's going to begin to share with you how he prays. The, the, this is a good prayer to pray over people. It's just a good prayer to pray over people. I mean, when you get an opportunity, you ought to pray this. If you got some bozo, you need to pray this over them, all right? Uh, you got Christians giving you a hard time, pray this over them. Hallelujah. And you can also pray it over yourself. Hallelujah. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, uh, just, I had it in my head, this went, what, I turned pages is what happened. And I was looking right down where it's supposed to be, and I had flipped the pages when I walked around there. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, remember, we just got through talking about on, on Sunday morning a couple weeks ago that, that, that one of the names of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom and, and, the, and, and the knowledge of the Lord, or, okay? And uh, we talked about the wisdom and the knowledge. And so here he's talking about that. It's really talking about the same thing. He'll give us that spirit of wisdom and um, give us the spirit of wisdom and knowledge of him, and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, I, the, the word knowledge is epinosis in the Greek, and it, it, it means a clear, precise, accurate, experiential knowledge. So God wants us to have the wisdom and the revelation of an experiential knowledge of God. Amen. Of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Father, of the Holy Ghost. He wants us to walk not just in a, well, I know about that. You know, you got, I heard about that. Yeah, I know that. that. That's not good enough. He wants us to experience it. Hallelujah. He wants us to have an experiential knowledge of that. Glory to God. Uh, listen to this. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Uh, that's just good stuff, man. That being enlightened. He wants us to have a, a, an understanding. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this up real quick because there's some good Greek words here. Hallelujah. Okay. The word revelation means disclosure, to be revealed. 
uh, wisdom in that, in that previous verse. Uh, it, just, it flat out just means wisdom. But then he says, um, the eyes of your understanding. And that is, you know, um, the mind, the understanding. Um, by implication, it's exercise of the mind and its understanding. Properly, the faculty of the mind. Hallelujah. Being enlightened. That is to shed rays, shine, to brighten up, to illuminate, to uh, enlighten, to make, to see. God wants us to be made to see. All right? The eyes of your understanding being like made to see that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Thank God. God God's not trying to play keep away. Everybody say, God's not trying to play keep away. God wants to reveal things to you. Say, God wants to reveal things to me. God wants me enlightened. Say, God wants me enlightened. See, God's not trying to keep you from having the knowledge of his will. God's not trying to play keep away with it. He sent his spirit to reveal it to you so that you can know what his will is. Amen? And he tells us in Romans chapter 12, he said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Can somebody say Glorioski? I'll just be Polish just about tonight. All right, Glorioski. Or, or Ruski, one of the two, Polish or Ruski, Glorioski, you know, hallelujah, we want, we want to be glorifying God, we want to be excited about the things of God, we want to know what the will and the purpose and the mind of God is, can you say amen, and he sent his spirit, Paul prays for them, this is a prayer, Paul's praying that the eyes of their understanding being lightened, that they come to know what is the hope of, the, of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, God's not trying to keep your inheritance away from you. He wants you walking in it. Can you say amen? Now, this next verse is interesting. It says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's the exceeding greatness of his power. Glory to God. And that word power there is dunamis. Now, that word dunamis can mean miracle power, but it can also mean strength. It can mean mighty work. It can mean, um, you know, uh, the, might, the worker of, of power. So here he is, according to the greatness of his power, of his strength. God has his strength been delivered to you. See, sometimes we get kind of hung up on the power thing. And we, get, we, we go between dunamis and exosia, and we get hung up on the part of dunamis being dynamite or explosive power. But it also means strength, God's strength. Thank God for his strength. I said, thank God for his strength. That in the, that in the time, of, time of peril, the time when there's not enough to get you by, when the time you don't have enough to put you over, the strength of God is available. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. And so it's extremely, uh, to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Glory to God. Now, this means ability or might. Now think about this now. God is, uh, what, what is exceeding, exceeding greatness of his power, his strength, or his dunamis miracle power, that he works towards us according to his mighty ability. See, it's a different word. It's a different word for power. It's um, iskus, 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 iskus. See, the other one's dunamis. This one's iskus. And it means according to his ability. Now we always say this, God's able. God's able to make all things abound towards you. You know, God's able. You, know, get, you find people all over the place. God's able. Amen. Amen. God is able. Well, God's just not just able. He's able to deliver it to you. He's able to bring it to you. Amen. What? His strength, the mighty strength of God. Can you say the mighty strength of God? According to the greatness of his power. Hallelujah. The exceeding greatness, the magnitude, the exceeding. Hallelujah. And to throw beyond the usual mark. The exceed, to, you know, uh, the, the, to throw beyond the usual, usual mark of the magnitude of the strength of the miracle power of God that he's delivered toward you according to his, what? According to his um, mighty, uh, word meaning um, dominion, to the dominion of his ability. <laughs> well, glory to God. I said glory to God. That's enough to make you shout, isn't it? Make me shout. Hallelujah. Amen. 
God's wanting to bring that to us. Hallelujah. Now, listen to this. Now, G, Paul prays that all these things happen to the believer. Talks about God, uh, that we come to understand and know and have a revelation of the power of God, the strength of God that's been delivered toward us according to the working of his ability. Now, listen to this. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. God wants you to have a revelation that the very same power, the very same strength, the very same ability, the very th same things that he used to raise Jesus from the dead, he is working in you. Can somebody run around the room? Hallelujah. Are you, are you listening? Are you, you, you get what I'm saying? Paul's praying that we come to that revelation that the very things that God did to raise Jesus from the dead is working in us. Hallelujah, according to his ability. And he wants you to have a revelation of that. He wants you to know that. See, God's not trying to play keep away. God's not trying to put you down. God has delivered unto you and working in you through his strength, through his ability, through his miracle working power, those very same things he worked when it, it, the, the, that took to raise Jesus from the dead is working in you. Hallelujah. That resurrection power is working in you. The power of God, the anointing of God, what it took to raise Jesus from the dead, working in you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's make a, that'll make a Pentecostal out of, out of a, a Muslim. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Can you say amen to all that? Amen. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen to this. How did he set him? Now remember, do you remember the scripture Paul wrote and said this over in, um, I believe, Romans chapter 8? It's the same, well, no, well, maybe this. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dwell in you to quicken your mortal body. Listen to this. He put this power in us, this strength, this ability. He wants us to have a revelation of it. Not just have heard about it. Not just, oh, man, that's just so wonderful what God did in Jesus. He wants you to have a revelation that that power is working toward you. The same power that he used to raise Jesus from the dead. And this is how he raised Jesus from the dead. Amen? Far above. Far above all principality. That means chief in command. Hallelujah. And power. Glory to God. Uh, now, I got to go back and make sure I don't get these mixed up because they're, yeah, this is, this is, um, sorry. This is exorcia. All of the chief in command. All power, exosia, all authority. This is where Jesus was raised up. And all might, hallelujah, meaning <clears throat> force. This is dunamis. The word might here is dunamis. So all force or miracle, miraculous power, abundance, uh, strength, miracle wonder works. Everything that's a chief commander, it's a chief in, in, in power. Every, hallelujah, Every dunamis, every, every miracle working, every might, which is uh, dunamis here, that power, power, ecstasy, every authority, every might, every, and dominion, dominion, hallelujah. This has to do with government. Now, we're talking spiritual side of this. This is the government of the kingdom of darkness trying to rule over your life. Hallelujah. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also with that which is to come. Now, here he takes and covers every aspect of an operation of a kingdom. Those that are in charge, are you here? That's the uh, principalities. Power, exorcism, all the authority. Three, might, dunamis, all miracle power, all force. Amen. And then all dominion, all government. Remember, Isaiah said that, you know, uh, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Amen. See, Satan no longer has the right to govern in your life. Evil no longer has the right to govern in your life. Principal spirits no longer have the right to, to, to enforce uh, through authority or through the power or governance in your life the works of Satan. Jesus was raised up far above all those things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he was raised up and set in the heavenly places, but, uh, but, you know, 
and had put all things under his feet. I'm sorry, you know, all, all names that's named also in this world, but also that which is to come. Put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all to the church. He's the head where the body. The body sits in the same place in authority, the same place in power, the same place in exousia and dunamis and all the other different things here. Principality is chief in command <clears throat> over the authority of those who in chief in command, over the force of those in, and the governance of those in charge. Jesus was raised up far above and seated far above, and he's the head, but we're the body. Put all things under his feet, amen, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, Paul has a prayer here that we would come to the, to the understanding, to the revelation, to the knowledge, the epinosis of all that God wrought in Jesus when he raised him from the dead is now at work in us, enabling and empowering and establishing us in a position of lordship and rulership over the principalities, power, might, and dominion of this world. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're in him. And every name that is named, not also in this world, but also in that which is to come. Now, remember, we have been given a power of attorney to use the name of Jesus. And because of that, we exercise that authority. Paul wants us to have that revelation. It's important that we come to that knowledge. It's important we come to that understanding. Why? So that we can rule as kings and priests in this life. Now, we are, now I know there's a book out there called Destined to Reign, and I, and I, and I can't agree with everything that's in there. There's some, there's some stuff that got out of balance. But we are destined, not just destined to reign, we're supposed to reign. We're supposed to be reigning right now. I don't, don't mean reign from the sky, I mean reigning as a king, a priest, or a kingdom of priests over what? Principalities, powers, mights, dominions, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. We're, we're established. Jesus was raised up and seated far above all those things. And then it says, he's the head, but we're the body. We're the fullness of him that filleth all in all. He's put all things under his feet. If it's under his feet, remember that song? It's under my feet. Yes, it's under my feet. Now my victory is complete. Jesus spoke principalities, made a show of them openly. It's under my feet. The devil's under my feet. Glory to God. Well, thank God it's under our feet. Why is it under our feet? Because we're in him. He's conquered. And he's seated. They're all under him. Amen? And because of that, we're to rule and reign in this life. Not when we all get to heaven. I mean, I'm glad, well, I'm glad we're all going to get to heaven. But, you know, it doesn't do me a whole lot of good to rule and reign over a devil who won't be there. I remember the first time I ever heard Kenneth Copeland preach, he was on the radio, and I just got and said, didn't even know who he was. He's preached about the armor of God. You got these people who think they're all going to wait till they get to heaven to put on the armor. And they're going to come clambering in there with their sword and their helmet and their shield and all this stuff, and they're going to go, where is the devil? God's going to say, he ain't here. Amen? So we don't, we, don't, we don't need our authority over the devil in heaven. Well, how do you know? Because he ain't there. Now, number one, the blood of Jesus has cleansed all the heavenly utensils of worship. Satan no longer has the ability just to go and go as he pleases. Did, did until Jesus came. We do know this, that in the end, he's going to be cast into the, uh, the pit. And after a thousand years, he'll be loose for a season to tempt the nations. And at the end of that, death and hell shall give up their dead. And Satan and, and all those will be cast into the lake of fire. And this is the second death. That's it. We need, we need our, we need to understand our, that's why Paul says he's praying for them. He's praying for them. That the eyes of their understanding being enlightened, they may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the exceeding greatness of his power towards us. Amen? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. Hallelujah. Well, how is it wrought in Christ? 
Look over in Colossians. We'll say, we're in Ephesians. Hey, but I got to go to Colossians. Amen? Chapter. Chapter something. Chapter, th- chapter 2, verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein you were also risen with him through faith of the operation of God. What operation of God? That same power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. Same power. That was the operation of God. Hallelujah. Who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and, and, and uncircumcision of your flesh, Hath he quickened or made alive together with him, having you forgiven you your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So let's go back over to Ephesians. Praise God. You see? With his exceeding greatness of his power towards us which believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So that's, that's what Colossians is talking about. He spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them over them. Triumphing. Triumphing over them in it. This is the operation of God that is working in us. That same power, that same authority, that same Ability to stand over the top of the enemy as the conqueror because I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. Christ in me, you know, what's the scripture say? The Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm in him, he's in me. What, what, all right, all right, people get all, but that, isn't that what Jesus said? He prayed, Father, that I, that, that I would be in, the, that we would be in them and they would be in us as you are, thou art in me and I'm in thee. That was the prayer of Jesus. Now, I believe Jesus' prayers get answered a whole lot more than your doctrine gets answered. Amen. Jesus prayed that. Now, God has wrought that power in us because we're believers. He's the head. He was raised up and seated at the right hand of the Father far above. And what it took to do that is the same thing it took to do it for us. And he wants us to have a revelation. That power is working in you. I said, that power is working in you. The same power. The same power. Hallelujah. And it's according to God's ability. His, his, his over-the-top ability. What does that mean? See, Paul's praying the church have a revelation that we don't have to succumb to the authority of Satan anymore. As a matter of fact, that, that we, if we do it, it's just out of ignorance or stupidity. It really is. It's not out of, out, out of having to. Uh, we just got, Jesse just got a letter. Now, Jesse has, a, has a, a, a site she really hasn't ever used called Divine Designs and Associates. For her, you know, just really hadn't put it up and running or anything. Got a letter from Nordic Photos in Sweden or somewhere, but with a, an American address, telling her that they, she had used one of their stock photos and they had to pay, and she, they want to settle on an amicable manner. So she's got to pay them five hundred and ten dollars, or they're going to take her to court. She's never used any stock photos. She's only used hers. You see, now people who are ignorant are, are, are afraid of a letter like because it looks real legal. Case number such and such, such and such, and we we've got here's a reference number for the photo you used, and all this kind of stuff. Now, we don't know if, if you use that, if you click on that thing where it says that photo, that it actually goes out and loads it onto your page so they can sue you or something. I, we don't know. We didn't do it. We deleted it. You know, because you go online, it says go online and click on this, and it'll show you the photo that you used with your watermark on it and all this kind of stuff. Well, it's a scam. But you see, either through ignorance or whatever, or fear, or whatever, she could submit to that and go, oh, no, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to get in court. I can't. I don't have the money to pay court costs and send them $510. And it would only be out of ignorance. Now, my, my thing is I'm going to turn it to the attorney general and, 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 and say, let's sue them because they're ripping people off. You know, this, this, is, this is garbage, you know. 
It's just pure garbage. But you see, ignorance could have her submit to this fake extortion. It's an extortion letter is what it is. But, the, but it looks legal. But see, ignorance could get her to submit to it and pay. And if she did, tough. She'd pay the price for her ignorance. Thank God our parents have got some brains. Because we got to open it up, look down and said, no, this, is, this, is, this ain't right. All right? So she doesn't have to submit to a false claim. And Satan's false claim is he's got authority over you. And it's because you once knew him and were subjugated to his authority and lived under his dominion and authority that it's easy for him to fool you into believing he has authority. So Paul comes to the church because he knows they've been born again. They've come into the kingdom of light. But remember, be not conformed to this world, Romans 12, 1 and 2, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It is the renewing of the mind to what the Bible says that liberates you from being conformed to the world. In other words, there are Christians walking around subjugating themselves to Satan's authority, and they don't have to. Because they, they think, I'm just got to live out of my flesh. I got to obey this. You know, when we all get to heaven one day, it's going to be good. But right now, I got to do what Satan tells me to do. I can't help it. And Paul said, I'm praying for the church that revelation comes. Amen? He actually says, I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers. That, 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 that revelation would come. The eyes of the understanding would be enlightened to the hope of his calling. Wow. Now, this prayer begins to take on more power and meaning now. Because Paul's praying for you to be able to understand and see things. And remember, Epinosa come to the knowledge, that clear, precise, accurate, and even experiential knowledge of these things. Hallelujah. That we come to understand that the power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, the power, the authority, the dominion, everything he used to raise Jesus from the dead is now at work in you. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, you were raised up with him. And when Jesus was made to sit at the Father's right hand, far above all principality, principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but also that which is to come. And it put all things where? Under his feet. We're the body. That means, well, what if I'm just a callus on the bottom of the foot? You're far above. You can take a bad self-image about who you are. I'm just a callus on the bottom of the scale on the bottom of the foot, man. Down there where the, uh, you know, the athlete's foot and the fungus grows. But you're still far above. I said you're still far above. What? All principality, power, might, and dominion. Because he raised him up far above. The, the head didn't go up one level and the body stayed somewhere else. All right? I mean, you know, unless you're like eight, seven foot or eight foot tall, usually your head's somewhere about five and a half foot from your feet. Okay? You know, you, you know and then let's put you on the rack and, and, and stretch you. You know, and drain you of your life. The Princess Bride saw that. Dick said something in church, I had to go home and watch Princess Bride. I just I was like, can't believe that this has got me, you know. <laughs> True love. He said the blade. He said the blade. He did not say. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And gave him to be the head. Gave him the head over all to the church. And see, we got to be the head over all things to the church. But let's, let's read it this way. And gave him the head over all to the church. Jesus took his authority and gave it over to the church. That which has worked in him now is working in us. Now we can walk in that authority over all that Jesus conquered. Having spoiled principalities, he made a show of them openly, triumphing. 
Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. If you, you've seen some old period films of the Roman era when they brought the conquerors back, they bring them back in cages. They bring the strongest, they take the strongest ones that were, that were left over from the battles and cage them. And they would bring them, and then, they, then at some point in time, some they would take them out, and they would drag them through the streets by the hair of their head and that kind of thing, just to humiliate them and let them know they are defeated people. They are a defeated foe. Jesus drug Satan around when he took his crown of authority to demonstrate he's a defeated foe. Same terminology is used there in, in Colossians that's used in reference to those things of, of history. Jesus triumphed. He just didn't, it wasn't a Rocky movie, okay? It wasn't dun da dun 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 Apollo Creed, they both fall down. He staggers up and wins. Jesus triumphed. Yes, yeah, Rocky 2, I know. We got Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, and then the newest one that came out. Rocky 6 and 7. It got kind of corny there for a while. Anyway, and another Rambo. But, it's, you know, it's not a matter of staggering and winning the fight, you know, barely winning. Jesus conquered Satan. Jesus emaciated Satan. And then he tried. You know, the Bible says this, and, and the word spoiled, having spoiled principles. Go back to Colossians, Colossians, Colossians. Colossians 2 again. And having spoiled principalities and powers. The word spoil there means he hurled back. You know, it's like all the demons of hell came and, and gathered up against him and tried to hold him down, and he just hurled them back. Phew, demons bouncing off the walls everywhere. Here a demon, there a demon, everywhere a demon, demon. I mean, he hurled them back and then spoiled. Amen. He spoiled them and then triumphing over them in it. He went right to Satan, took him and defeated him and then triumphed there right in front of all the co co cohorts of hell. Jesus defeated their master and triumphed over him. I said, glory to God. Now, God wants you to have, you got to understand, Satan is a defeated foe. The only way he can get you to operate under his authority or his governance or his dominion is to trick you. To get you to believe that you don't have the power to do what you need to do to overcome him. But thanks be to God. Everybody say, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be to God, which always causes us to do what? Same word. Amen? Isn't that the same word? Thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm looking for that. I'm not finding it real quick. I'll find it. Hallelujah. Huh? Colossians 1. Why did I go to 1 Corinthians 15? I don't know. I look at 2 Corinthians 2.14. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Come on, pages. Unstick here. Now, thanks be done to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and makes manifest in the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Now, Jesus triumphed over them. Now, he causes us, what? Now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Why? That revelation of what God has did in Jesus is now working in us. And by that revelation, we understand we have authority, that we have dominion, that we reign as a king and a priest in this life. We overcome the enemy. Can somebody say Glory. And we walk in our authority and we walk in our power. 
and somebody could shout, Shanda Skillibanda. All right. We're going to leave you with that. I'm not even going to try to move into chapter 2 with this being, being said. I don't want to mess up what you got. I want you to go home this week and think about the power you have working in you. Say, the power is working in me. Hallelujah. The same power that he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Isn't that exciting? Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.